Hey everybody. So uh, back at it this week, we uh, went home and visited and um, it's a beautiful time of year here. The, the trees are changing and it's fall and it's like super exciting. Is it super exciting? I don't know, maybe not really, but it's definitely super gorgeous outside and uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's just so, it's such peak season for the leaves here in New York and I'm also, I'm headed up to Donald's for a lesson, so I'm getting a great view of the scenery uh, on my way up, which is pretty cool. So I have some recordings prepared for Donald and he and I are going to review them and have a session because I'm of course preparing for the Peabrock competition in London here in a few weeks. It's like only three weeks away now, which is like totally scary though. So that's my story for today. I'm sticking to it and I'll uh, bring you along for the ride. So we're here for Donald Lindsay's Nickel Brown Report 2017. Oh well, it was a good year. Uh, and we had excellent judges. We had Ben McClamrock, we had uh, Andrew Lee, and we had Ian K. McDonald. Uh, that was the panel. And a very good turnout. We had 10 players. They came from all over the place. Mr. Sanchez was the winner of the chalice, and uh, young Alistair Bevan won everything else. He did really well in the 6 eights and the Marshall Spain Reel. And uh, our local man, uh, ben Montrose was the best dressed and by a mile. He was immaculately turned out <laughs> and played extremely well. Yeah, he got some big prizes in that's, that too. That's correct, he did. So he's been uh, quite uh, impressive. What's the vibe, like what's the overall, like, like what's the overall moral of the story from this year? Like, like well, what's Alistair Bevan doing that's above the field? Okay, that's a good question you just asked. and. Um, <clears throat> I feel that there is a, a trend which is goes back long term and is coming more and more to be the centerpiece of where, where competitive piping is going. And the trend is to focus on very correct, very good, correct, presentation and what I mean by that is very good consistent finger work amazingly stable and well-balanced instruments these these were the characteristics of, of Alistair's playing it's I kind think of, that's yeah it's kind yeah. of fun because Alistair is like son of a former winner absolutely Nicaragua. absolutely like I don't is that the first time that's happened probably I want to say that I think it perhaps may have yeah. been. There have been frequently over the years descendants of people who are keen pipers, but this was kind of dramatic. In fact, I had a chat with uh, Alistair's father and uh, we had a nice visit and he was talking about when he came and his mother, Pat Bevan, was with him and he said, he remembered the fall colors when he came, and he was sort of hoping he would see more than we, we got this time. But he, he, his memory, Alan Bevan's memory of the experience was very, very uh, strong. He remembered so many little details. And so clearly it was like um, part of a rite of passage, perhaps, for his son yeah, to go absolutely. through this with him. So it was quite uh, amazing that. And, and the three judges are all individuals who have competed at the Nickel Brown, and they made a point of uh, underscoring that detail. That each one of them, when they spoke to the audience, talked about how much it meant to them to have the opportunity to play at the Nickel Brown, and how important a stepping stone it was for them in their piping activity. Uh, and of course, that's led to silver medals, gold medals, and and the lot, yeah, absolutely. the whole thing. Um, but if I could just summarize, I would say this, that the issue that is on the table for a piper who wants to become successful at this competition game, 
has really shifted hard onto pick good music, be very wary of, of engaging in really highly controversial versions and highly controversial tunes. That makes me sad to have to say that because my teachers had no fear of that. They would play things that were not down the middle of the road, but which had authenticity and which had a historical basis quite often. But it's become now a major issue when you're spending a lot of money to go abroad to play. You don't want to be ruled out because you've played something that is outside the knowledge of the judges. We Donald used to say, don't play over the head of the judges. So that's what I heard in some of the successful performances, is that they played high quality music on a high quality bagpipe with high quality execution, but they stayed within the parameters of the known material. Yeah. Okay. It's not to say that the judge, I mean, obviously those are super experienced judges. Yes. But especially in the world of Peabrock, you like, you know, uh, I don't know, it would take quite the judge to just have like intricate knowledge of uh, like all the different possible interpretations of various obscure tunes. It's like, you know, so I, you're definitely not saying the judges don't know what they're doing or anything like that. It's just that playing it safe with your repertoire can give you an advantage. And sometimes not if the judge is less familiar, it puts you at a disadvantage. Yes, uh, yeah. yes. And it's so like a strategic thing. It's like separating church and state. And what I mean by that is there's music that we all play for our souls that inspires us and makes us feel uh, wonderful about playing. But then sometimes you have to adjust what you're doing for the circumstances. Yeah. you got to play the game the right way. Well, play stuff that's sort of, I'll say, within their comprehension of, of everybody. And that's what most of the prize winners did, by the way. Yeah. Most of them played material that was within the scope of, the, of what is better known. Now, the last thing I would say on this is that uh, some, of the, some of the best outcomes <coughs> came from tunes that are not necessarily <coughs> the most difficult tunes. However, <clears throat> there were clearly tunes that, for which people were comfortable and they were able to put a lot of beauty into their performance. So uh, it's an argument against playing really, really hairy stuff that people are not familiar with. Yeah. Um, Just play good tunes really well. Yep, exactly. That's it. Thanks, Donald. Thank you.